Here. Thank you. So my name is Jeff Miller, and I'm an engineer. And this is the little presentation on the path that I've taken to get where I'm at now. Uh, anybody guess whose father I am in this room? Sure. Sabrina Miller behind you. I'm going to I know Sabrina. I'm on the green dot on her. So, anybody know what an engineer is? Anyone? That's good. Because what the answer I didn't want is the guy who drives the train. <laughs> Legally, to call yourself an engineer, you have to be certified. And I think there's only one profession that allows you to call yourself an engineer and not be certified, and that's a locomotive engineer. And he's not really an engineer at all, but he had the name for so long they let him keep it. So an engineer designs things, puts things together. Contractor builds things. But an engineer doesn't invent things either. They basically take things that other people invented, put it together to make it do something, make it useful. There are various types of engineers, everything from electrical to mechanical. Mechanical does the, a lot of times the HVAC, the cooling and heating of the building, uh, plumbing in the buildings. Civils do everything from design your parking lots to where a building sits on the land to uh, environmental of water, wastewater treatment to structural support of towers and buildings. You know, how, almost like an architect, but yeah, will hold together. Architects just show how things look. Then there are various other engineers, controls, software, chemical. Uh, the type of engineering I do, we work on projects and we do what we call design, bid, build. Where the engineer designs it, it gets bid out for somebody to give a price on and then whoever has lowest price, the contractor builds it. And basically, you have an owner and he wants it you have a consulting engineer, and he designs it, and you have a contractor, and he builds it. And the engineer, a lot of times, provides plans and specs, which are basically drawings on a large sheet of paper to kind of explain how he wants things put together. And specs are just basically word documents that say how I want it built in boring words. Now, engineers, besides being designers, sometimes they work for the owners. And sometimes they work for the contractors because they have that expertise that the other people want to help them understand how to build things better or the oversight that they get what they want. Here's a couple pictures of construction sites. Uh, some of these are pretty local here in North Carolina. And basically, you know, they, he's making different plans, an engineer, for these buildings. And then as it's being built, he'll do inspections to make sure that it's being built for his drawings. Become an engineer, obviously go to college, usually four years, sometimes more. Uh, a lot of learning, a lot of techs, a lot of tests. Not very exciting, but when you get out, you get to be an engineer. Not quite though. When you get out, they don't trust you. They wanna make sure you know what you're doing. So they basically make you work for four years and you think you're done with tests at college and then they make you take an eight-hour test. Yes. And then if you pass, the state certifies you and gives you a little certificate. Each state, you gotta get a certificate from. Hopefully you don't have to take a test in each state, but they usually make you apply in each state to get one. So I'm an electrical engineer. Uh, I went to college for four years, and there's a lot of different things you can specialize in electrical engineering, everything from building chips to building computers to solar arrays to wireless communications, satellite communications. But I did power distribution and automation. This slide's out of place, I'm sorry, but this is an example of drawings that engineers might have of how to put things together. It's kind of a connection diagram for connecting different devices, almost like a computer network, because that's what I do. But back to power distribution, one of, the, one of the things I specialize in. Everybody know what that is? Okay, so this is a receptacle. That's how you get power. So in power distribution, you're supplying power to receptacles, to lights, and to devices out in the field. This is a pump that pumps water, pretty big one. And basically you're making sure that 
the wires are big enough to hold the power, that you have enough power to a device, and that it's safe for people. More exciting than power distribution is automation, which is what I really love to do, and that is automating things. And you might notice sometimes you've seen lights that come on at it automatically when you enter a room. Well, there's, it goes far beyond that to the point where we can look at a manufacturing plant far away and be in our office and see what it's doing and control it from there. So you don't want somebody in a big manufacturing plant having to run all over the place doing everything. Instead, you automate it and you control it from a central plot place with a lot less people. And in an automation system, usually there's devices that measure out in the field everything from cameras to see how things are doing, to temperature sensors to see how warm or cold, to devices that measure flow in pipes, to uh, control devices which basically pump the pumps, turn switches on and off to be able to control the process. That goes to what we call control panels which bring all the wires or wireless signals back to devices that figure out everything and control it. And then you have a computer system above that that basically gives you the operator interface almost like a game on how things look in the field and what it's doing. So this is an example of some instrumentation. That's a pipe with a flow meter in it. And this is various sensors where water is trickling through them to measure various parameters like pH and turbidity. Here's an example of a control panel. That's the outside with buttons for operators to press and a little screen to tell them what things are doing in the field. And then this is all the wiring that comes in the control panel and the smarts that the wiring connects to, like a computer. And then back in the control room, where the operators sit and everything comes together, you basically have a computer system that has pictures on it that represent what's out in the field. And operators can sit there and see what's happening and make adjustments as necessary. So usually engineers go in one industry or another, or maybe a couple. There's very few engineers that work for everything. You want to specialize a little bit. So not only am I an electrical engineer, not only am I specialized in automation controls and power distribution, but then I work in the water wastewater industry. And so we deal with water and wastewater treatment, the water distribution systems that bring it to your house, and the wastewater collection systems that take the stuff from your house to the wastewater treatment plant. When I say wastewater, does everybody understand that's what comes out of a toilet? Okay. Icky stuff, yeah. So. so in water, give you a little overview, we basically take things from a lake or a well, and then we pump it over to where we settle any debris out of it, you know, sand and stuff. And then we run it through a filter, and we disinfect it, and then we pump it into the tanks you've probably seen out in the town. And then that water is up really high, so it's a lot of pressure that brings it over to your house. And that's an aerial view of a water treatment plant I worked on. And that's one of the settling basins where they pump the water in here. It basically sits in here a while and slows out very fl slowly. But things settle to the bottom and they scrape the bottom off and haul that away. And then this is a filter. Basically, the water comes in on the top, goes through the sand, comes out the bottom, and comes out pipes. And then that pipes go off to be disinfected and go to your house, pump to your house. And then this is a control room that I designed that basically has the computers and screens and those are operators controlling it. In wastewater, we kind of almost do the same thing, but we're collecting wastewater from houses and industry. You want to settle it, and then there's what they call biological treatment, where if you have an aquarium, you know, usually there's these bugs that grow in a biological filter of an aquarium, and it's almost the same thing at a wastewater treatment plant where you're basically taking fish will make ammonia, which is pee, and then that is, turns to, there's bugs, and I say bugs, but really they're bacteria. And the bacteria turns it from ammonia to nitrate, and then there's other bugs that turn it from nitrite to nitrate, and then nitrate is basically fertilizer for plants to use, whereas nitrite and ammonia are toxic. So the plant blows air to give the bugs oxygen to breathe in the water and help them live, and they take out all the bad stuff, 
and make it into basically solids and fertilizer and then clarified water. So the water gets clean and the solids get separated and the solids go over and they get collected and brought to a landfill or sometimes you use for fertilizer for plants. When you're making the solids, a lot of times you ever smell that gas you know, on the side of the road, the sewage gas, and it's really stinky? That is actually methane and that can burn. And so a lot of times they'll, they'll take that methane gas out of the process and they'll make electricity with it or heat a building with it. And then the water basically gets disinfected and gets brought out to your lakes and streams once it's safe. And that's a picture of a wastewater treatment plant. And you can see the yucky stuff entering right there. There's more yucky stuff. That's a clarifier that was shut down and algae's grown on it because it's not working right now, but I like the green color. There's a clarifier how it usually works. And basically the heavy, the heavy junk settles to the bottom and gets collected and pumped out the bottom. And then there's scum that forms on the top and these arms scrape it off and get that off. And then there's clean water that kind of falls over the edge and that gets disinfected and then out to a river. And you have two ways you can disinfect. One is use like bleach, chlorine to kill things. But another way is using UV bulbs. So these are just UV light bulbs submersed in water and they kill the bad bacteria and stuff. And then this is a picture of one of the processes the, where they're hauling off the solids that they took out of the wastewater. And this is like a typical computer screen that you would see on the, in the control room. Any questions? So technically, um, it's not really waste anymore, but uh, it just gets thrown back into the rivers and then it keeps drinking? Usually it's cleaner than the water in the river. Oh, okay. And I've actually seen people drink it you, I wouldn't drink it myself, but <laughs> many people, it's, it's, it won't kill you. <laughs> it's just the thought of it. In fact, these days, there's what they um, call indirect reuse. So there are wastewater plants that put it into the river, and a couple feet down, they pull from the river and go to the water plant. And so you're basically taking the, the effluent of a wastewater plant and cleaning it up for drinking water. Well, I didn't want to get too technical on this because technically they don't kill it, uh, they sterilize it. So the things are still alive, but they can't reproduce anymore. So bacteria, a couple bacteria are in your system all the time, they don't hurt you. But when they start reproducing a lot and, and getting many, many numbers inside of you, then that's when they get bad. So another way, instead of spending so much energy to kill it, they only have to put enough energy in, into the water just to sterilize it. Any other questions? Um, when, it, when the water gets sent to the landfills, where does it go after that? Does it get stained? Well, there's a couple different choices there. Some landfills, they just pile it on top of the ground and they have permits to uh, basically sprinkle it with water and then they grow trees in it and use it as fertilizer. Sometimes the waste has toxins in it because it has industrial waste, so people have like metals in it sometimes, and then, then it has to go to landfill dumps. And then other times, it can be um, used as fertilizer and bagged up and actually sold. That's how a lot of fertilizer is made. Any other questions? Thank you, everyone, for listening. I appreciate it.